But the disturbing thing is that it's possible to be the most faithful attendee, active individual, and still be a backslider. Some may come to church for the purpose of running away from God. This is called a religion of the externals. The Pharisees in Christ's day were guilty of this. Give me something to do so that I don't have to admit I can do nothing toward my own salvation. A person with this attitude tends to be very unforgiving of others and of self. Some are backsliders because they believe the church represents a list of do's and don'ts. If it tastes good, don't eat it. If it looks good, don't look at it. If it feels good, don't touch it. And if it's fun at all, by all means, don't do that. (laughs) Not very attractive, is it? Here again, the gospel is misunderstood. God is not a list of do's and don'ts. God is love. His commandments are extensions of that love. If you love me, keep my commandments. That is said throughout all of Scripture. The love for doing what is right comes from loving he who is right. That's right. Unfortunately, the common theme is, I just won't be a part of a church. I'll serve God on my own. After all, the church is full of hypocrites. Mm. What's a hypocrite, anyway? A hypocrite is that guy that complains about the sex and violence he watches on his Blu-ray. Uh. That's a hypocrite. <laughs> I'll serve God on my own. I'll live my own life. I'll worship at home. 1 Corinthians 12 shows that it's impossible to live apart from the body of those who believe in Jesus. I have seen it too many times. People that people that believe like this very quickly go one of two directions. They either sorry, most drift away from anything spiritual. There is no one there to encourage them. Some become fanatical about some aspect of religion. The reason that one slips away is there is no one there to encourage. The reason one becomes fanatical is there is no one there to balance out their viewpoint. Have you seen the lizards with the blue tails? Bright blue tails? Um, the one that shows up one day without the tail? Yeah. Have you noticed the tail grows back? I've seen many lizards grow a new tail, but I've never seen a tail grow a new lizard. Have you? <laughs> the tail always decomposes. When we separate ourselves from the body, we rot, and the body lives on. Not perfect, but alive and growing. Some backsliders, be, some are backsliding because of open sin in their life. King David was like this. He stole a man's wife and had her husband killed, but he was still in the church. He was still the king. The sin was a symptom of the backslidden heart. Hope comes for this kind of backslider when he realizes just what he has done to break God's heart. After the prophet Nathan pointed out this out to David, he responded with, "Not, well, Lord, I'm king." Or, it was a bad day, or it wasn't my fault, or a man, I'm a man after all. No, he didn't make excuses, did he? He said, you're right. Psalm 51 is one of my favorite verses, where David says, Created me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. Then there's the prodigal backslider, the one who was close to the Father, who has tasted the love and knows the goodness but believes he knows a better way. But even the prodigal son was received home one day when he came to himself and remembered his father's love. He was received back as a son, just as he was, before he could even confess of his sins. God accepts a person who comes in rags, just as he is. That's a good thing, because that's all we have to offer. The Bible tells us that our righteousness is like filthy rags. Backsliding happens easily and effortlessly, unsuspected, often by others or by ourselves. No one wakes up in the morning and says, I think I'll be a backslider today. (laughs) It's like when you wreck your car. You didn't intend to do that. It's seldom planned, that is why it's called an accident. If you'd been warned that you were going to have an accident if you went on that road, wouldn't you take a different road? (laughs) Never yet heard someone talking to the police and say, but officer, I had it on purpose. (laughs) It's an accident. Take a different road before that accident happens. One day I watched this elderly man. Um, I went to the post office to uh, buy some stamps. And I was standing in line, and this elderly man, I could see out the window, he got out of his car. And he was 
very slow, shut the door, you know, and shuffling steps. And it took him, it seemed like forever, to get from his car door to the curb, over the curb, and inside. And he got in line behind me. And we're staying there in line, and I finally got up to the counter to get my, you know, thing. And the uh, old man, while I was dealing with it, the old man all of a sudden, you could hear him, I could hear him talking to the guy behind him. And he said, oh, I forgot my envelope in the car. Oh, no. Now, the nice man behind him goes, which car is your car? I'll go out and get it and bring it right in for you. The old man's response was, no, I'll just do it another day. And he shuffled back out, got in his car, and drove away. Now, 